Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Big time drone racing comes to Reno. Unique offers extended service plan. And drones spotted on video near Blue Angels during performance. Hi, I'm Bree Cross. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI. The Reno Air Racing Association has signed an agreement with the Multi-GP Drone Racing League to host a National Drone Racing Championship during this year's National Championship Air Races. The drone races will be held in the Air Races on-site drone zone. Quote, the addition of Multi-GP's National Drone Racing Championship into the air races allows our fans to experience exciting drone technology up close and personally. Tony Logateta, Director of Finance for the Reno Air Races Association said, while air racing remains our number one priority, we are eager to incorporate this emerging entertainment into our lineup. Top pilots from each multi-GP regional qualifier who advance to their respective regional final will have an opportunity to advance to the championship as the top two pilots from each of the 14 multi-GP regional finals will be invited. The 28 regional finalists will be joined at the championship by 117 other pilots who have proven themselves through other methods such as highly ranked competitors from the regional finals and universal time trial leaderboards. In total, 114 pilots will compete at the championship, including the 2015 and 2016 multi-GP national champion, Sean Knight Fury Taylor, who will have the opportunity to defend his title. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. The Kansas Department of Transportation and AirMap will soon deploy unmanned traffic management technology across the state of Kansas. The initiative, which is the first of its kind in the United States, will support the growth of the state's drone economy and ensure safer skies for all who live, work, and fly in Kansas. Compass Drone is set to unveil a comprehensive drone-based mapping program designed specifically for public safety applications. The Complete Incident Response Recovery Unmanned Aerial System Program is designed primarily for accident reconstruction and crime scene mapping, but is also applicable to search and rescue and reconnaissance missions. Small UAS will soon be used to assist Daytona Beach police officers and firefighters during a variety of tasks, including evaluating hazardous areas following a hurricane or other disasters, and finding lost nursing home residents. This will be possible thanks to a new aviation program called the DBPD Aviation Program that the DBPD is launching in collaboration with Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. The Danville Life Saving Crew in Danville, Virginia will begin using small UAS to help them during search and rescue missions. Through Piedmont Virginia Community College, Five members of the DLSC spent 40 hours in UAS ground school, where they learned about FAA regulations, flight operations, human factors, and radio communications, which prepared them for their remote pilot certificate exam. Drone maker Unique has introduced an extended warranty program it is calling the Unique Extended Services, or YES Plan. The plan supports the Breeze Series and Typhoon H Series aircraft, there are two levels of coverage offered by the company. The plans offer unlimited manufacturer defect repairs. An upgrade YES crash forgiveness plan includes up to two non-warranty repairs. That was our Unmanned Minute, now back to the rest of the news. The increased use of commercial and privately owned small unmanned aircraft systems has raised Defense Department concerns for the safety and security of its installations, its aviation, and its people. Guidance was sent in early August to the services and to installations about the use of small unmanned aircraft systems over and around military installations in the United States, according to Navy Captain Jeff Davis. The new guidance specifies how DOD will interact with local communities about UAS interactions on and near military installations 
and follows classified guidance that was provided to the services and installations in early July. Quote, all UAS activities within the United States must follow appropriate FAA regulations and guidelines. Davis said, noting that UAS activity outside FAA rules and guidelines is considered unauthorized activity. Quote, we support civilian law enforcement investigations and the prosecution of unauthorized UAS operations over military installations, Davis said. And though we do not discuss specific force protection measures, we of course retain the right of self-defense. And when it comes to UAS or drones operating over military installations, this new guidance does afford us the ability to take action to stop those threats. Davis said such actions include tracking, disabling, and destroying drones, depending on circumstance and the type of installation where UAS activity is detected. Here's a bit of news we really didn't need. A spectator watching the Blue Angels perform during the Seafair Air Show in Mercer Island, Washington last week captured a video of a drone flying in the vicinity of the jets, though a Navy official told local media that the UAV was no threat to the aerobatic team. The drone video was first reported online. Several people reportedly saw the drone, including Washington State police officers on the I-90 bridge over Lake Washington, where John Rudifer captured the video using his cell phone. He said he heard the WSP officers discussing the presence of the drone. The drone reportedly remained in the area until after the end of the Blue Angel show. Blue Angel spokesman Lt. Joe Hans said that the team was aware of the drone during the performance, but the pilots did not notice it was there and it was not close enough to interfere with the show. Redifer speculated that the drone was owned by someone local, but it's not known who was operating the aircraft during the show. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week. <laughs>